Hi everyone, Teddy here. And I'm Courtney, and today we're gonna be going over seven fragrances that smell more expensive than they are. So how we're going to do this, and really kind of the baseline and understanding of you know, what was going through our mind and kind of putting this list together, because this could kind of be a loose term, what really qualifies. We're really looking at fragrances, mostly from the designer spectrum, that are going to be elevated in how, whether their construction, their composition, their certain elements or the note breakdown that just make them more unique and just smell more elevated or sophisticated compared to some of the competition in the price range. So that really is the lead here and what we're going for. I have four, Courtney has three. With that being the case, should I begin? Yep, go ahead. Okay. First one here, Dunhill Icon. I will spray this. I don't know that I've ever smelled this one actually. It looks like a thermos, right? It does, right, yeah. Huh? Here we go. It looks heavy. I absolutely love this fragrance. Now, you can tell me what you get, but mm. I, I get mostly a peppery opening. Uh -huh. You get some bergamot. Uh, you're also getting a feeling of neroli, which is, I, I think, strong off the top. Mm -hmm. Now, what they're doing is they're kind of creating a lot of these notes by just cr kind of creating more synthetic composition with what this fragrance is going for. Okay. They're not actually utilizing oud. I've seen it on Fragrantica and other places that they have oud in it. Clearly that's not on display here, but they have elements that kind of resemble that. Mm -hmm. I think this is just well-crafted. Some people might say it's kind of sweet. I get more of this pepper opening, which I am a huge fan of. I just like things with kind of that spicier type of open, but it's not so spicy in this. It's not, doesn't no, have like the- No, but I also don't get a sweet, like people, a lot of people say. No, no, I, I kind of get this fresh, somewhat spicy type mm -hmm. of opening. It's got depth to it. I think it's really nice. I, I really enjoy how this one just projects out. It's bright. It kind of emulates a lot of these elements of like neroli in maybe not as much oud, but I did see that mentioned. I could see where some people are coming from when they say they recognize something like that, but this is more multifaceted than many fragrances in the price range. Mm -hmm. And I think the Icon line is just so well done. This is one that many people hype up. Uh, Again, I don't want to say it's like the greatest fragrance in the world, but for what it is going for, where it represents in price, I see why people like it. And I'm, you know, count me in as a fan. I'm, I'm certainly a fan of this one. Yeah, that's a pretty fragrance. I actually really like that. That could be a year rounder too, very versatile. Yes, I would say changing in the seasons does really well. It's not the greatest in the performance department. I would say average, maybe slightly below average, but uh, when you're able to wear this maybe in a warmer day, mm -hmm. maybe spring, fall, certainly works. First option. Dunhill Icon. The next one here is Bentley for Men Intense. Now this one is a little boozy. It's got that rum, that incense, some woody notes, some leather, um, and a little bit of cinnamon that makes it pretty sweet. Yes, this one is sweet. Very and sweet. I'm almost hesitant to actually spray this because it's a strong fragrance. It too. is, it is. I like it though. Let me smell. I really do like it. It smells more expensive than it is. I mean, right away. That rum note is so easy to detect. Mm -hmm. When you hear an affordable fragrance is doing an alcohol note, good luck, run for the hills typically. <laughs> but this is very nice. Actually, what I get mostly is kind of that just sweet type of accord off the top mm -hmm. that it just, it just works. Uh, it's kind of has that kind of spicy tone, but it's got depth to it. It does. It's warm, it's sweet, it's boozy. But again, it has that depth that a lot of cheaper fragrances don't normally have, which I think makes this one stand out a little bit more. Boozy. Great performance too. Yes, amazing performance. Yes. Boozy with affordable fragrance. Fragrance is typically- Scary. A disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> this one, not so much. It works, yes. surprisingly. Bentley for Men Intense. It's, yeah. a, it's a great cold weather fragrance, no doubt about it. I'm a fan of it too. Number three. Number three, I have featured this already on the channel. Guerlain EDP. This to me combines classic Guerlain with a more modern approach for the warmer months of the year. What you get mostly off the top, you're gonna get that lime note in the mint, so it's a refreshing blast. You get some rum in it as well. A lot of people talk about like the mojito. I was gonna you say. You get a bit of that. Like kind of that, almost feel like the spearmint yeah. in like your cocktail, like a Moscow mule almost maybe even too. That's what it reminds me of. It's a nice a refreshing Moscow mule. You get a little bit of that type of approach. Uh, vetiver, also cedar, patchouli. So it kind of has this woodsy backbone. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see this with some of the niche houses as well as some other brands out there. Again, talking about a note of alcohol in a more attainable fragrance, but Guerlain, 
I don't think you have any concern. Guerlain's gonna pull it off, uh, stick the landing every single time. Well done, and reason why I wanted to include on this list, you know, Guerlain, not gonna surprise everybody, but as you, I think most people know, you can find many of their fragrances for solid prices, and this is one, I'm always looking for summer fragrances that have at least decent performance. I understand that the fragility of some of these citrus top notes and you know what's happening there, you're not gonna be able to get the best performance. But this one, I think average, slightly above average in terms of performance and it's well-crafted, has a, just kind of some depth to it. I like the combination of the mint and the, it's the lime coming together with that rum note. It's interesting, it's cool. Not as mature in age as some of the other Guerlain fragrances. I'm just a fan of it. I like that one too. I like it a lot. I think that would be perfect for the summertime. Um, nice and refreshing. Great choice. Does his job. Yep. Next up, we have Xenia Womo. I actually featured this in one of the videos on my channel that I've done in the past, back in the day when I was doing fragrance videos on my channel. It's just a very nice, light, refreshing scent. It's got violet leaf, citrus, uh, bergamot, vetiver, cedar. It's a nice woody, aromatic fragrance. Performance is average, which is nice. This has become more expensive. Has it? When we purchased it, I'm not kidding, I purchased this for like $9.99 at like a TJ Maxx. Maybe the cheapest fragrance in our... M might be, collection. legitimately might be. But it smells really good. It's kind of powdery a little bit. Yes, yeah, so that violet leaf off the top, it kind of has this mysterious type of undertone. And Xenia has a brand, I've mentioned it before, everything's solid. Like yeah. everything they make is solid. I think they're an underrated house and they do some great work. This is a spring fragrance all over it. Yeah. You know, very similar to like the Dunhill. Like there's just more going on. There's depth to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the violet leaf with the citrus kind of fusion. It just, mm -hmm. it's kind of mysterious. It reminds me of like this kind of rainy day in a way. Yeah, because when it rains, the sense of, you know, the flowers and all of that kind of come out. It smells like a rainy spring day. It's very nice. It's very nice. Nice and refreshing. Like I said, kind of powdery because of that violet leaf. And not everybody talks about it. I think no. some people talk about it, but it, I think it's one of the stronger fragrances that I've tried from the brand and, and it's, a huge proponent of it. It smells unique too. I think with a lot of, you know, cheaper or even designer fragrances, you kind of don't want to smell like everyone else. This is one that I don't see people wear a lot. Yeah, there's, there's other elements out there. Where you get that violet leaf. There are other yeah. fragrances that are gonna do that, but it's got its own twist. It's well done, reasonable price. I haven't checked this as of late, but still, even if these have gone up in price, I still think they're it's, it's a well-crafted fragrance, no question about it. But with the context in which we purchase it for, yeah. I mean, it's like- Might nighted. be a little more than that now, but yeah. still should be, you know, I think I think it's way affordable. more than that now, but still. Good one. Ready for our next one? Next up. Let's take a trip back to the 90s. Oh no. With Kenzo Jungle. Oh, baby. I normally don't like to hear that. So, for one, interesting bottle. What is the lid? Is that supposed to be like a zebra tail? That is exactly what it's supposed to be. This is a fragrance I don't see many people talking about, but it is classic late 90s fragrance. It came out in 1998. I, I can't think of anything else that I have smelled that is like this. It is just crazy spicy and warm off the top. It's just like a slap in the face. You get some. Lime is also very yeah. present off it the It smells top. like you just squeezed the lime. And then you also are getting kind of that just cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, get some cardamom there too. But you get all these spices with a citrus. It's very strange, it's like this warm, spicy, almost kind of dusty. Yeah, you know, I have to be honest, I was expecting to hate this just from the zebra tail cap, the trip back to the 90s that you prefaced it with. But honestly, it's kind of nice. And again, I've never smelled anything like this before. It is like those spices mixed with a little squeeze of lime on the top. Kenzo, incredibly underrated. Well-crafted for this one. It, it is. It does kind of smell of that era a bit. Some people say it's animalic. I don't really get that as much. I think people get caught up into seeing the zebra on top and it's like, oh, it's animalic. But it, it's more of just this kind of yeah. warm, spicy, just slap in the face with the lime as well. Kind of refreshing in some ways on that side, but then also, uh, again, just really getting down to that spicy, warm type of nature. And again, have not smelled really anything else like it. It's unique and typically, I think you see this for pretty reasonable prices online in certain places. So definitely recommend checking it out. If anything we've said interests you about this, you like the bottle, you like kind of this, this nature, what it's going for, like this nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, spiciness off the top, then Give it a shot, I definitely would recommend it. It's not your just conventional, uh, kind of affordable designer fragrance. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised by that one, so. Kenzo Jungle. Our second to last one, Courtney, go ahead. One of my faves, Machino Toy Boy, the cutest little packaging that ever did exist. Just take his little head off. Nice, that escalated quickly. <laughs> 
Let's get this on the thing here. Now. <laughs> I don't think you even hit it. I'm so up. bad at this. Okay. This one is so different than anything I've ever smelled. From a designer perspective. From a designer perspective. It has that rose, that pink pepper that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you think of, you know, a masculine fragrance. But I think that men can pull this off because it adds this like touch of playfulness and tenderness. It's a certain type of guy that will wear this. A confident guy. You have nothing to fear. No fear. It's unique, it's dynamic. I mean, it really is just so different than anything I've ever smelled in the designer category. Last one, I featured this on the channel before. I believe this was. Was this the first fragrance on our channel? No, no, no. One of the first fragrances on our channel. Okay. It was in our second video, but I led the video with it. Ancre Noir Sport. You've smelled this one before. I can't remember. So this is a vetiver backbone fragrance, which I like, I enjoy. It's kind of vetiver aquatic with some citrus undertones with the grapefruit. It's just multi-dimensional. As you kind of smell some of these fragrances, I don't want to say that sophisticated means it's kind of going away from like the mass appealing type of stuff that's popular now, but in a lot of ways it is mm -hmm. because so much of the popular fragrances are like one dimensional. You get the Ambroxan, the kind of blue fragrances, you know, you get the citrus, but it's just kind of, it's always just. It's the same notes over and over. And it's very linear. Like what I think I've noticed, and if I have to summarize what you're experiencing with a lot of these fragrances is it's, not a linear type of experience. It, it's a little bit more, take some turns, you know, you get, you get a different change here throughout the longevity of the fragrance. And that's really what you get here. Citrus right off the top, you get a little bit of that, but then the vetiver becomes apparent and I just love the dry down from this. You just have different woods that are coming in, the watery notes also uh, will appear. You have cypress in here as well. Mm -hmm. It's just a well done fragrance. It's not trying to be something it's not. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of Ancre Noir, just the traditional version. This is the one that I prefer, uh, but I, th I think it's just a well-crafted fragrance and probably one of the best designer fragrances out there for like the spring. If you do like a fragrance with like a vetiver backbone, if you don't, then maybe not. But if you like something like Terre d'Hermes, uh, something of that nature, you want something actually with a little bit less uh, kind of watered down and has some other supporting elements there. It's not as dry. Mm -hmm. This one's not as dry. It kind of has like this almost wet, type of tone yeah, to it, right? Yeah, I think the citrus helps with that too. It's kind of juicy a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but the sport, it's definitely sporty. It smells yes. sporty. It smells like a tennis player or something. That's one way to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> but on Crane Noir Sport, it's a great one to check out. All right, guys, that is all we have for seven fragrances that smell more expensive than they are. Let us know some of your favorites in the comments below. If you like anything on our list, if we missed anything and you like something that we didn't include today, definitely be sure to let us know. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or found it helpful and hit that subscribe button to be in the loop for when we release new content. Again, new channel, we're just getting started out here. Share with your fragrance friends and you know, we'll get more people over. It's awesome. Yeah, and if there's other fragrances that you think should be included in a list like this, I think there's part two that could potentially happen here. So giving this video a thumbs up is a great indicator. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time.